right, Sue? We'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. If you resist change, you will face challenges on a daily basis. If you consciously refocus your attitude to see the benefits of change, your outlook becomes positive and life becomes easier. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Warren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hammond? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Excused. Matichek? Excused. Raisler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Versi? Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all please rise and join Alderman Boren in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Like we said, it's semi-paperless. <laughs> uh, dear Mayor Ryan, Council and IDC members, um, Terry Renzelman is advising that he's requesting me to be removed from the Industrial Development Commission as soon as possible. Uh, he's moving to Massachusetts towards the end of February. Okay, and if I may add, uh, Terry is going to be a missionary in Haiti full-time in the future. A very noble cause. President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file. Under discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. No further resignations. No mayor's appointments this evening. No confirmations. Public forum. Sue. Yes, this evening we have five people. And what I would just gently remind everybody, because we are in an election cycle right now, that there would be no campaigning for any candidates during your, during your five-minute talk. First on our list is Charlie Krebs. If you could please come up to the front. Thank you. Charlie, can I get your home address, please? 906 Logan Avenue, 53083. Give me one second here. And you can go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Charlie Krebs. I am here as the president of the Sheboygan Performing Arts Association. And the mission of this organization is we are a collaborative association of performing arts organizations in Sheboygan County whose mission it is to pr promote the wealth of performing arts and the vital role that they play in our community's culture, economy, and quality of life. Like many of you, I was glued to the television last night to watch the Giants beat the Patriots. And I'm reminded about, in competition, we use one hemisphere of our brain. It's a linear hemisphere. The competition is healthy, exciting, and compelling. Our other hemisphere is also exciting, healthy, and compelling. But unlike competition, which is win-lose, collaboration is win-win. This hemisphere is about imagination, and it's about creativity, but not just as a performer, but as an audience member as well. Research has shown that students who participate in and are, who are exposed to the arts get better grades, have higher graduation rates, and make better employees. And the reason is twofold. One, the performing arts nurture imagination. The performing arts also nurture collaboration. I love competition. But I also love collaboration, and I feel that an integrated mind is a healthy mind. The performing arts not only provide extraordinary entertainment, but they allow for fewer of our dollars to leave Sheboygan County when people go to Milwaukee or Chicago or Green Bay for entertainment. The performing arts enhance the local economy. They bring more tax dollars into the county. 
They encourage people to go out to eat, stay in our hotels. Additionally, they can help our economy tremendously because companies that interview candidates that are coming to a, an area where there are, there's a richer texture of culture, they are able to attract higher employees or better quality employees. There are thousands of opportunities to witness and participate the performing arts, which are represented by members of our organizations here tonight. We have created a website, SheboyganPerformingArts.com, and all of the performing arts events within the county are represented on this website, SheboyganPerformingArts.com. It is my pleasure now to introduce representatives of the various organizations. Before those that are present are introduced, I would like to mention the ones who are unable to be with us. The Kohler Distinguished Guest Series, Gospel Music Wisconsin, the Plymouth Arts Center, Hometown Harmony Tradition, the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan Fine Arts Programs, Lakeshore Productions, Lakeshore Chorale and Youth Chorale, and Theater for Young Audiences. Those members that are with us tonight represent the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and Brusky at your service. The Sheboygan Symphony Orchestra, Mary Shalhorn at your service. The Sheboygan Pops Concert Band, Linda Erdman at your service. The Sheboygan Theater Company, Michelle Bestel at your service. The Sheboygan Concert Association, Patrick Gayen at your service. The Stephanie H. Weil Center for the Performing Arts, Bill Fisher and Kim Meller at your service. And Lakeland College Performing Arts Department, Charlie Krebs at your service. The arts, whatever they do and whenever they call us together, invite us to look at our fellow human beings with generosity and curiosity. And if we have ever needed that capacity in human history, we need it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Next. <clears throat> Next on the list would be Richard Susha. Richard, can I get your home address, please? 15 North Point Drive. OK, you will have five minutes, sir. I am a spokesman this evening for the Sheboygan County Taxpayer Alliance. And I ask why haven't the aldermen introduced a referendum question about a full-time or part-time mayor? This was discussed in committee, a committee for sure, some weeks ago. And based on the recent establishment of a city administrator, the position of mayor need not be nor should it be a full-time position, even at a reduced salary of $60,000. That plus benefits, plus 2.5% increase every year, is way too much for a person who will now cut ribbons, run council meetings, appoint committee members, and talk of their vision. The city administrator, like the county administrator, is now the most important position, as it should be. The county has done an excellent job in the past six years controlling their expenses. The same can happen in the city of Sheboygan. The citizens will not lose their right to choose or elect their mayor, only it will be a part-time position. Remember, he or she will still break ties and have veto power. Those are important issues, but not worth the position or salary of a full-time mayor. We don't need a full-time $60,000 a year mayor, much, much less a $60,000 part-time mayor. And now you are talking about increasing the city administrator's salary. What happened to a revenue neutral position just some months ago? That promise didn't last long. Apparently that increase is now in the 2012 budget unbeknownst to many people. It's time to rethink this mayor issue and ask the people about a full-time 
or part-time mayor before it's too late. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Next on the list is Joe Sagal. <clears throat> Joe, can I have your home address, please? 1522 Alabama Avenue. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Mayor and our good aldermen, all our people, I should say. I would like to know what's really happening here. On the front page the other day, there's supposed to be a 7% raise. Two pages later, they want to cut rate of salaries and raises for everything. I don't understand this. We're supposed to be in debt, don't have no money, but we're giving out money. Where's it coming from? I don't understand this. I don't. Why, uh, what the thinking is? Roads are bad, there's other things that have to be done. We don't have money, but we can give out money like it's going out of style. I don't understand this. I've been here listening to a lot of this, but it just don't sink in. I can't believe this again because there's a hard time. Is this gonna be like the ambulance deal? They shove that down our throats, and all of a sudden they want to close firehouses? Doesn't add up. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Next. Yes, next is Carl Schaffenberg. Is that correct? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And can I have your home address, please? 630 Ontario Avenue. Ontario. And you Mr. May Mayor, members of council, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. You might think, if I'm here to talk about the proposal to negotiate an agreement for the casino at the South Pier District, that since I'm wearing a clergy collar, I'm here to talk about the moral issues surrounding gambling, and I'm not. There are real issues about that, but that's not what I'm here about. And I don't represent the clergy of Sheboygan, although of the 12 churches I've spoken to in Sheboygan, every one of them thinks this is a bad idea for moral reasons. But I'm here to talk about why you need to do a lot more homework before negotiating any option purchase agreement. A lot more homework. I moved here 90 days ago today from the state of Mississippi where we have a lot of casino gambling. If I'd known about a casino here, I might have thought twice. It surfaced like a submarine suddenly because things have sort of cooked along and now we're just getting more details. What I want to talk about is what happens when a casino shows up, the economic effects and the social pathologies. I'm not talking about crime. I'm not talking about change in downtown character that comes. What I'm talking about is the fact that if you're sitting in a church office, and people walk in the door and they need help, you see a lot more of them. Doubles easily. People who can't pay their rent, people who can't pay for their medication, people who can't pay their utility bill, food, childcare. The social pathologies all go up in a big way. And this affects all charities as well as city services. That needs to be studied in detail in other communities. The data are out there. There are plenty of states where this has happened. Do the homework. Now, another economic effect relates to what happens to your downtown businesses. And the best example I could cite there wouldn't be one from Mississippi, but it would be one close by here, up in Escanaba in the Upper Peninsula. You think this is going to help downtown business? The discretionary income goes to the casino. If you have a restaurant, if you have a boutique store, you got a business. The discretionary income goes to the casino. If you have an arts center and arts programs, the discretionary income goes to the casino. Let alone all the social pathologies that come and how many people you see with marital difficulties. Now, that's what happens economically. That's what needs to be studied economically and the data are out there. Before I became a priest, I used to run a pharmaceutical company, so I'm familiar with site location issues. You don't go where there's a casino, not for any moral reason. 
it's because you're looking for trained workers. A manufacturing com uh, community like Sheboygan has trained workers. But over 20 years, the level of training goes down because you're switching over to a service economy, and it's kind of the Walmart model. Everybody, the wages go down over time. So there are all kinds of things that happen when a casino shows up that are independent of any moral hazard that I'd be happy to talk about sometime. But let's leave morality aside and look at the good of the community just from a dollars and cents perspective. If you're sitting in the church and people are walking in and needing help, you're going to see a lot more once you have a casino. So before you negotiate any option agreement, before you authorize anybody to do any option agreement, you've got to do a serious, detailed economic study and discuss that with the public. Thank you. Thank you. And last on our list would be Eric Neve. Hi, Eric. Would you please give me your home address? 711 North 5th Street. North 5th. Eric, could I please ask you to take off your campaign button? For Ron Paul? We don't have, we don't authorize campaign buttons in the council chambers. Thanks. Thanks. Can you see through that? Nope. No, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, you will have five minutes, sir. All right, thank you. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank the city clerk's office for putting up the online agenda. For the first time, it was really easy to find out what was going to be talked about tonight, and I could even look at actual documents that were being discussed, so that is a definite plus. But it's also um, a minus because there's a, a lot of things I, I wish I could speak about, but I obviously don't have time. Um, I want to ditto what the last couple people said um, the pay raise for the administrator is totally out of line in, for, what we ha for the system we have set up. He already agreed to take the, the job and the extra responsibilities at a certain rate, and there's, there's no need to increase it now. Um, I think there was an, a really good editorial in the press about that exact issue. Um, for a long time, Sheboygan existed without that position, so there's X amount of tasks that have to be taken care of. And they were all taken care of at a salary of the, the mayor's salary. For some reason now, this, these tasks can't be taken by the, by the mayor. Um, and now we have to create another, uh, another position. So at, at the very least, you have to cut the mayor's position to half time or get rid of it and go to a council manager type system. Just doesn't make sense to be paying two people for the, for the same amount of work that was previously done by one. Um, but uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the casino. I'm against it and I agree with a lot of the things that, that the, the last speaker said. But more importantly, you've talked off and on at the last meetings that I've been to about having a referendum for the people and I really don't understand why that can't be done before you go through this option to negotiate sale. The people of Sheboygan have a right to, to let their voice be heard. It was done before, and I think if you're, if you're going through the plans again, you need to find out again. And if 70% if of the people are, are for it or whatever, 60%, yeah, then we can go through with this option to negotiate. But if there is still a majority that are against it, then it's, the res it's the responsibility of people that represent the, the citizens of Sheboygan to take very seriously a, a, a negotiation of this magnitude that will change the fabric of what Sheboygan means to people. I've talked to people that said they would move away from Sheboygan if a casino was built here, just for that reason alone. So it, it really is an important issue to people, whether you agree with it or not. You need to decide to have a referendum again and start over from there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, that's it for it public is. forum. All set. That's all. Okay, thank you everybody for speaking. Um, Mayor's announcements, um, I would just like to, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves regarding a casino issue, um, 
There will be no vote on any <coughs> land offerings this evening. It will be referred to, a, to the Finance Committee to let everybody know that. Um, also, uh, as part of the process, there is what is called an economic, or rather an environmental impact study, EIS. Uh, it has nothing to do with soil or pollution. It has everything to do with the socioeconomic impact of gaming. Uh, this, will, this, this will be a process which will take somewhere between 12 and 18 months to do this study. So it's uh, anything that is being negotiated um, in the near future would be for a potential referendum coming up in the future. Um, this study will cost many hundreds of thousands of dollars to complete. It will be paid for by the principles um, of the casino. It will not cost the taxpayers any money. It will be done for by an independent group. So before everybody comes up with reasons um, to halt everything now, everything will go to a public referendum where everybody will have a vote, but there will be a environmental impact study done, a socioeconomic impact study done, just to let everybody know that. So I think uh, we're jumping the gun right now. Um, Anything that will happen is many, many, many months away, just to make that clear. That's all I've got. We have uh, hearings. 2.1, to repeal and recreate the text of subsection 15.20512 of the city's zoning ordinance relating to regulations applicable to large-scale buildings so as to include industrial buildings. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding this hearing? Second, is there anybody that would like to be heard? Going three times, is there anybody that would like to be heard? President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearings. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing is closed. <coughs> Consent agenda, 3-1 through 3-12, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, pass all resolutions and substitute resolutions. Second. Ordinances. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second under discussion on the consent agenda. Okay, if there is no discussion, roll call please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koss? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Ursi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 5 1 through 5 6. Okay, where are we at here? All right. Now we're talking. This is what I say. This is the. Uh, it's all to be referred. Is all to be referred. Five one through five six. Right. I'm still looking for five one through five six in my stack. Not it's not in there. Nope. Okay. Five one through five six will be referred. Resolutions. Six one. A resolution accepting a deed from the Redevelopment Authority of a parcel of land along the Sheboygan River west of the railroad right-of-way along North 13th Street. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koss? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6 2 by Alderman Boren. A resolution authorizing advertising for bids for the resurfacing of Superior Avenue from 200 feet west of North 13th Street to North 6th Street. Alderman Boren. 
Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I ask, for, uh, ask to suspend the rules. So moved. We have a motion and a second on, to suspend the rules. Is there anybody that uh, is opposed to the rules being suspended or would like an explanation? Rules are suspended. Please continue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the rule of the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koss? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6.3 by Alder Persons Hammond, Decker, Belt, Boren, Kittleson, Raisler, Sampson, Van Akron, and Vanderweel. A resolution ratifying and implementing a special charge for garbage and refuse disposal services provided by the city. Alderman Hammond, Vice President. Mayor, Hammond. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? No. Koth? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. Nine eyes, four no's. Motion carries. 6 4 by Alderman Hammond, a resolution authorizing entering into an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the City of Sheboygan Falls for IT services. Vice President Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I would ask that we suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Any explanation required or anybody opposed? Rules are suspended. Please continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koss? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries, 6.5 by Alderman Boren, a resolution authorizing advertising for bids for the 2012 concrete sidewalk program, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, like to suspend the rules on this one also. Second. Motion to second to suspend the rules. Anybody opposed or require an explanation? Rules are suspended, please. Uh, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6-6. Six, six. By Alderman Hammond, a resolution authorizing retaining outside counsel in connection with proposed agreements among Claremont New Frontier Resort LLC, the Chicago and Chippewa community, the city, and the Redevelopment Authority. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would ask that we suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Anybody opposed to the rules being suspended or would it require an explanation? Alderman Boren? I'd like an explanation, please, on the urgency of suspending tonight. Okay. Uh, would you like to cover that, Alderman Hammond, or would it you like me to? It doesn't matter. Um, if you want to, it's fine. Okay. Um, my understanding of suspending the rules is that we've been working with Quarles and Brady um, uh, with respect to the negotiations up to this point, or at least the preliminary conversations. I shouldn't say negotiations. Um, and under this, um, the casinos or the, excuse me, the uh, other partners or players are going to uh, uh, pay for the attorney. Um, this is just authorizing us to retain them. So, um, so ba basically the, um, the 
uh, attorneys of Quarles and Brady who did the original agreement uh, between the city and Blue Harbor when Blue Harbor was built. It's the same law firm are going to represent the city, uh, have represented the city as far as the documents that have been drawn. That's you, Steve. That have been drawn to date. <laughs> Steve's feeling musical. Um, they have represented the, uh, the city as far as the documents that have been drawn, uh, that drawn up that we've seen to this point. Um, those, the documents or the outside council will be funded by the Claremont New Frontier Group. It's not going to be paid for by the taxpayers. So in order to get that funding stream going, that is why we're looking to suspend the rules. Um, under this agreement, there is no cap on legal fees. In other words, all outside legal fees will be paid for by the interested parties and not by the city or the taxpayers. Does that explain it, Alderman Bourne? Well, I had... Uh... Please. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> We're going to be holding this document that has to do with the land sale for two weeks. And I'm wondering why we would have to pass this tonight if there's a chance that the other document is not going to pass in two weeks. Because there has already been some work done uh, by this outside legal counsel to, to get this document. And who authorized that? Well, who authorized that work? I mean, uh, the, in, in essence, they've been hired. And is this a formality tonight, tonight that they are hired? Who hired them? Steve. We contacted them. Uh, at this point, they're, they're not on the meter. Uh, they've provided some preliminary work in anticipation of uh, being uh, compensated uh, at some point. Uh, you, know, you don't have to uh, suspend the rules tonight if you don't want, but the redevelopment authority is already approved uh, uh, hiring the firm, although the Redevelopment Authority doesn't have any, any funding separately. Uh, but the Redevelopment Authority has also approved the document. Uh, and I know there was question at the Redevelopment Authority as to uh, whether there's going to be any payment for that service as well. Uh, as the mayor said, the proposed agreement with the uh, with Claremont is for uh, Claremont to pick up the entire cost of the legal fees. Um, so if you want to wait till next week or next council meeting and act on it, that I don't see any difficulty in doing that, but uh, I also don't see any problem with suspending the rules and acting on it if, uh, if you're inclined to do that tonight. Okay, what we're, what we're discussing right now then is suspension of the rules. Uh, if anybody has any input, we are only discussing suspension of the rules. If anybody is opposed, we will go for a roll call vote on suspension of the rules. Alderman Bourne, are you opposed to suspending the rules? Yes, I am. Okay. Any other discussion on suspension of the rules? <clears throat> Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. What would happen if we did just not suspend the rules tonight and just let this go? Are we at a loss of anything at this point? When, uh, nothing. Uh, Other than time? Well, you know, if we have this outside, outside council that has done some work to this point, uh, I don't uh, know if this council is sending the right message by uh, just at, not at least approving the outside council that will be, a, will be paid for um, by uh, the interested parties and not by the city, in my opinion. But all we're talking about is suspending the rules right now. Suspending the rules to vote on it. And, and right now we will have a vote strictly on suspension of the rules. Is there any other discussion on, dis on suspension of the rules? If there is none, we will take a roll call vote on suspension of the rules. An I vote will suspend the rules. A no vote will not. Sue. Kath? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Percy? No. Belt? Aye. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Ten eyes, three noes. The rules are suspended. Mayor, need three quarters to suspend the rules. So we have 13 called. people. We have 13. Isn't it three quarters of the full council? Three quarters of the full council? Full councils. Still 16, even though we only have 15? 
four elected council. No, I I'm pretty sure we went over that with the uh, quasi-judicial. Quick checking of the rules here. Okay, so the rules are not suspended. This will lie over till the next meeting. Moving on. President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know. Vice President Hammond. It doesn't matter. Um, I would ask that this be referred to finance with the other documents that um, could, uh, pertain to this. Okay. Uh, so we will refer this to finance. Anybody opposed to this being referred to finance? To finance it goes to return the next council meeting. Moving on, 6-7. A resolution approving the fiscal year 2012 one-year annual action plan for the Community Development Block Grant Program Submission, CDBG, by Alder Persons Hammond, Boren, Van De Weel, and Kittleson, Alderman Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, again, I'd ask for a suspension of the rules. So moved. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is anybody, uh, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended on this one or would require an explanation? I'll explain anyways. Um, timing is somewhat of the essence. This needs to get back to, um, I believe, HUD and um, the U.S. Uh, yeah, HUD um, for approval and um, essential, or um, consequently uh, uh, sending out the funds. So we, this needs to be done. I'm not sure if Chad's here, but... Um, uh, in the near in the near future, so it's imperative we get this done. So. Okay. Anybody is opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Please continue. Um, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the rule the motion upon its passage, the resolution upon its passage. Excuse me. Under discussion. If there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belch? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries 6.8 by Alder Persons Raisler, Versi, Decker, and Sampson. A resolution lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire one police officer in the police department. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, would like to uh, move to suspend the rules, please. Second. Do we need to suspend the rules on this one? Who did the second? I don't think we need to suspend the rules on this one, do we? No. no. Probably not. There's no suspension. So we got through that much. Then I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Raisler? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 6.9 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Versi, Decker, and Sampson. A resolution lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire one telecommunicator. Telecommunicator in the police department, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heinemann? Aye. Cott? Aye. Raisler? Aye. And Samson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Resolutions 610 and 611 lie over. 612. 
Alderman Bourne, did you have something? Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> yes, I, on 611, I was asked, I was asked by uh, our, our development manager, Chad, to suspend the rules on this one tonight. So I'd like to suspend the rules on 611. Second. Okay, 611, a resolution authorizing entering into the second modification to the project agreement for design and dredging within the Sheboygan River Area of Concern, or AOC. Alderman Bourne. If I could, Mayor, I'd like to have Mr. Pelichek come forward and explain to the older persons the urgency of passing this document tonight. Chad. What this document is, is this is a second modification to the agreement between the four sponsors of the EPA dredging project. And the EPA has asked us today if we can, uh, like Alderman Bourne said, if we can suspend the rules and get it approved. This is a multi-step process um, between the city, the county, the DNR, and EPA. And what this does is it adds the previous agreement added design and feasibility. This adds the actual dollars to start the construction, which is like $49 million. There's no more money to the city to do it. We've contributed our 100,000 moving forward, but this is really to get the agreement in place so that they can actually start the process and start bidding the project to move forward with the actual construction. So it's a good thing going forward and they've asked if we can expedite it on our end, so that's the reason behind the suspension of the rules but there's no, no financial impact to the city. Okay, is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended to spend $49 million of federal money? There is none, rules are suspended. Did we have a motion to put this upon its passage? Thanks, Mayor, I'll move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Steve, um, one thing council should be aware of, the resolution calls for uh, approving this document in form substantially similar to the attached. Uh, we've had some communication with the EPA, be some minor modifications to this agreement. Uh, specifically, there's one reference to disposal of 172,000 cubic yards of contaminated sediment. They've agreed to say approximately 172,000 cubic yards of uh, contaminated sediment. Uh, We've also asked them to clarify there's a provision in here with respect to uh, uh, continuing uh, obligations after the project is completed and it references uh, language that is in the uh, statement of work and the statement of work hasn't been finalized yet and uh, wanted to make clear with, with the federal government that uh, there would not be any obligation on the city's part to do maintenance dredging after uh, all the federal agencies are in here and done the dredging and then they leave and then they expect the city to pick up the tab for future dredging. So uh, that'll be clarified, but, but basically the document is, will be substantially similar to the way it's drafted. Thank you, Steve. Uh, and just to clarify, this is uh, for the Glenpole portion, uh, which is the A Street Bridge on up to Kiwanis Park is, is this portion of the river dredging. It's not the, uh, it's not the Army Corps of Engineers portion from the A Street Bridge on up. Any uh, further questions on this document? If there are none, roll call please. Sandra Wheel? Aye. <clears throat> Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 612 will be referred to Public Works. Reports of Committees 7, 7-1, by Law and Licensing. Uh, your committee to whom was referred, RO number 3328-1112 by the city clerk submitting license applications for the period ending June 30th, 2012 and June 30th, 2013, recommends that beverage operators license application number 9419 be sent to the full common council with no recommendation. 9419, Alden Person Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there were four of us at the committee meeting out of the five and two voted to deny, one voted to approve and one abstained. So we weren't able to pass, do anything with this. 
Um, is Krista Stabby here? She is here. Okay. Um, she, her record is uh, two retail thefts in 2008, a retail theft in 2009, and an underage alcohol in 2010. Um, the police department did give a negative recommendation because of um, her offenses in such a short time and of her, and also to her age. So we're coming to the council to, um, with no recommendation and decide to approve or disapprove. Very good. Uh, would you like to come up and speak, please? Can I get your name, please? Krista Stoby. K-R-I-S. K-R-I-S-T-A. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, I just don't understand why my beverage license would be denied because like the only thing that would have to do with my beverage license is my underage, which wasn't even the reason why they denied it. It was because of my retail theft and it has nothing to do with my beverage license at all. And there was people that were here at the meeting and they had like five or six times that they sold to underage people and their bartenders. Like, how are they gonna have their beverage license and sell to underage people but I can't have it because I shoplifted when I was younger. Okay, are there any uh, questions from the council? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if we grant this license, where are you gonna be working? At QMART. This is my manager. I'm her manager. I've been working with her since, since September. She's really a good worker. You can tell that she has changed in her ways. Um, basically, she's matured a lot. She holds two jobs. She does work at festival besides ours, and she's never missed a day and never called in sick. I mean, she's one of those that you can always count on. I have never seen her do anything that would be considered illegal or bad. I mean, she's checks ID. She does what she's supposed to do. I'm pretty impressed with her as a, as a young adult. So, I mean, what she did in her past is her past. So we try to outgrow those things and move on. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Are there any further questions from the council? If there are no further questions, you can you. be seated, please. Okay, if there are no further questions or comments, we will do a roll call vote, and I vote. We need a motion. We need a motion. Oh, we need a motion. Would anybody like to make a motion on the floor? Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, beverage license. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the beverage license under discussion. If there is no discussion, we'll do a roll call vote. An I vote would approve the beverage license. A no vote would deny. Roll call. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? No. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel. Abstain. Excuse me? Abstain. Eleven ayes, one abstention, and one no. Motion carries. You can get your beverage operator's license from the first office, correct, sir? That's correct. Thank you. Okay, that was 7172. By law and licensing. Uh, submitting a license application, blah, blah, blah. Uh, recommending that beverage operator's license number 9414 be denied based upon his failure to accu accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application and his failure to cooperate with the committee by law and licensing. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Brian Smith here? He is not here. Please continue. Um, he was invited to our committee twice and did not appear either time, so we ended up having a deny. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Hammond. Aye. <laughs> Heidemann? Aye. Cott? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 13 ayes. 
Motion carries. Moving on to 7 3. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Committee was referred resolution number 120 11 12 by Alderpersons Versi, Boren, Heidemann, and Sampson that the City of Sheboygan's Police Department, Fire Department, Department of Public Works, Library, and Transit Department reduce their current 2012 budget by 2% in benefits and 1%. 2% wage and benefits and 1% non-wage for 2013. Recommends that the resolution be filed by finance. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move the report committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be filed. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and file. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Boren. No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. <laughs> Excuse me. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Kopp? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. And Belt? Aye. Eight ayes and five noes. Motion carries. Okay, moving on to ordinances introduced 10, 10-1, an ordinance repealing and recreating note one to the schedule of plan examination and permit fees contained in section 26-38 of the municipal code. So, oh, excuse me, I'll save my voice. 10, one, two, and three will be referred. Like I said, it's a trial basis here. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. One, two, three, and we are referred. Moving on to matters laid over. Eleven, eleven dash one. It is. So it is. Thank you. Eleven one. To repeal and create the text of subsection 15.20512 of the City of Sheboygan Official Zoning Ordinance relating to regulations applicable to large scale buildings so as to include industrial buildings. That would be from uh, City Planning, I believe. Yes. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage and the RO uh, be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion. I can just elaborate on this a bit. Uh, we passed a resolution a couple, a year or two ago um, that uh, if that we were looking after a building was vacant for a year, uh, large commercial buildings mainly, uh, that the, the owners have plans for those buildings. Uh, so as they, so they don't sit vacant for years and years such as the old Walmart did in the city. This is to include industrial buildings, so if we have any industry that is relocating, uh, then after a year we can take some action uh, to get a plan from them as to whether they are going to uh, raise or are making a conscious effort to uh, rehabilitate that building. Any discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koss? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Bourne? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 12.1, submitting a communication requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions uh, will be referred to PPNS. 12-2, in RO granting various license applications by the city clerk, President Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. All eyes on this. Sure. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 12-3. 
Option to negotiate and purchase agreement with Claremont New Frontier LLC for the sale of land in the South Pier District from the Redevelopment Authority. Vice President Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move uh, we accept and place on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Uh, Alderman Hammond, would you clarify that? Does that, uh, this is separate from the other document that's held over until, for two weeks? Um, yes, this is actually the recommendation from the Redevelopment Authority on that document. The next document you'll see, um, which would be 12 4 Four would be the one that's being that's going to lie over and that we're going to discuss at finance. So this is just the report of uh, the redevelopment authority or their recommendation. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of accepting and filing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Twelve dash four. Uh, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the option to negotiate and purchase will be referred to finance. 12-5, a resolution approving the combining of dispatch services between the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County by Alder Persons Boren, Carlson, Decker, Hammond, Hammond, Heideman, Koth, Raisler, Sampson, and Vanderweel. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. I believe we need a motion to suspend on this one. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. We do need a motion to suspend. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend. Is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules or would like an explanation on suspending the rules? The rules are suspended. Please continue. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Under discussion, Mayor, under the first whereas, where it says, whereas a combined dispatch center will increase, I believe that should be decrease because it will decrease oh. dispatch times on 9-11 calls from cell phones by one minute to 1.5 minutes. Anybody disagree with that statement? Blame the author. <laughs> that would be me. Okay, we have a typo in the uh, second paragraph. Uh, combined dispatch center will decrease dispatch times, so we will make a note of that. Could be significant. <laughs> Any further discussion? Okay, if there is no further discussion, uh, Alderman Vice President Hammond. Thank you. Um, just uh, as kind of an FYI, the, uh, as part of the resolution, it was uh, subject to uh, the infrastructure costs were subject to approval of the Capital Improvements Committee, and that happened tonight. Um, so um, that approval was made by that particular committee. Unanimously. Unanimously. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, you can go cut my light off. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Uh, roll call, please. Belt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Abstain. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 12 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Other matters, Attorney McLean. 12.6 12 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Albert Webster requesting a waiver to the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1310 North, 7, North 14th Street. Will be referred to public protection and safety. 12.7 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. Will be referred to law and licensing. And 12.8 is an ordinance establishing the salary for the chief administrative officer. We'll uh, lie over. Okay, next on my list is a motion to adjourn. Do we have one? Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. Under discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.
Thank you.